Hey guys, iPod Krabby King here, and Google Chrome for iOS just hit the App Store, I believe yesterday, and I've been using it as my primary browser for about a day now, and it's absolutely amazing, I love it, so much better than Safari, and just to prove it to you, I'll just show you that Safari is at the end of my page, all lonely, because I do not need it anymore, I wish I could delete it, but I can't, because as you can see, Chrome is on my bottom left dock, as you can see right there. Now this application is free, we getting a lot of hype and I'm going to show it to you in more detail right here. Uh, first I'm going to show you on the iPad and then later I'm going to show you on the iPhone. I'm just going to do a brief overview on the iPhone because this is a universal app and it will work on both. Uh, but just to you know, give you a little brief overview on the iPhone because because it is a smaller screen it does have a little bit different layouts and you know to get more familiar with those I'm going to do a little tiny overview on the iPhones. So beginning, so beginning on the iPad, we're going to open the application up right here. And as you can see, I already have a web page open. I'm just going to close that. But as you can see, if I open a new tab, it looks basically like exactly, at least on the iPad, current for your desktop computer. You have that really nice bar up here. Uh, you know, it just works and it loads awesomely. And it just is so much better than Safari in pretty much every aspect. Uh, we here we have our most visited page, which basically you know our last visit websites that you know you may visit. I'm just gonna click Amazon, and as you can see, it loads up so much quicker on Safari. Awesome, zoomed really smooth. Uh, scrolls pretty much exactly like Safari. Uh, maybe if not smoother because it's just like that. <laughs> um, but you can reload the page here. We have some options: forward, back, reload. We have our ta tab manager. Which, like I said, Chrome on the computer, you can have unlimited web pages or pages. As you can see, I just click clear, and then once you get to the end, as many as you want, just keep clicking in. And to manage them, you can just scroll through them like there. Sorry. As you can see, it works beautifully. Pretty much no bugs at all with that. And if I want to exit all of them, just keep pressing this X, 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 and it'll just delete all of them. So that is always nice. The tabs is definitely one of my favorite features about this application because it was one of my favorite features on the computer. So here we have our little, um, I, don't, I don't guess what you call it, a little extra tab of features, um, which basically has our you know, list button, I guess, which you can add a new tab, just that way, or you can just press the, you know, the plus button. Uh, so then you can have an incognito tab, which basically, uh, you can just read this. Basically, it everything you search in here won't be in your history or, you know, any web uh, cache or cookies. It won't accept any cookies. And basically, it's just kind of like a secret tab if you want to do your secret browsing. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, but we're just going to open this one more time because you have a little bit more features. <clears throat> bookmarks is basically standard your bookmarks. It'll bring you to this section of, you know, this page. And you can have your bookmarks. By the way, this does sync with all your devices. So... It does work with my iPhone, so I got this first on my iPhone, synced it up all with my Google, and then I added some, you know, bookmarks and, uh, I guess, recent web pages, and it automatically opened those up. It just magically appeared here, so definitely it syncs with Google, and then you'll transfer with your devices awesomely. Really, I didn't think that would be a nice, uh, I just didn't think that would be a really good feature, and I still don't really think it's that amazing, and how much they're stressing syncing with the devices. I seriously don't get it really that much, um, but uh, here we have our other devices. It is actually kind of handy, I guess. And then last iPhone, I used my iPhone. I was on YouTube. Click that, and it loads up YouTube again beautifully fast, and it just works well. So if we click here one more time, we have we can e automatically email it. So you're on this page, which I, I actually think is really cool. You say something. Oh, I want to email this to my teacher, or whatever. Email. Bring up this neat little. Uh, page that you can just simply email it so that's always nice and then you know we have other phases this is uh, find a page request a desktop site and we have our settings which basically has some nice settings there now this is really I, I really like this part now I'm always fascinated with dictation whether it be dragon dictation other apps in the app store even if they don't work well I've always been fascinated with 
it, you know, picking up your voice and then, you know, sending it to its servers where it searches it back. I don't know. I just think it's really cool. And with this, it really handles the dictation amazingly. I really love it. Uh, so basically, when you're in here, you can just press this button. And first, I'm going to talk in a, you know, a, how I wouldn't talk, a robotic voice. Uh, so I'm going to talk in like this. YouTube.com. And as you can see, YouTube.com, obviously, because I talked... How I wouldn't talk in real life. Now, say I'm in a bad mood and I always want to talk to it. And I say YouTube.com. <coughs> and I mumble a little bit. Uh, it actually does pick that up really well. And I was honestly surprised. So we're just going to type in something new. Amazon.com. And as you can see, Amazon.com worked amazingly. As you can see, uh, I kind of mumbled and was like, Amazon.com. But it still picked it up, which is always awesome. Really dictation. I definitely am going to use this a lot more than typing it in or if I'm in a comfortable, uncomfortable spot. I can't really type. Just be like, uh, which is better, Kindle Fire or iPad 2? Honestly, do not know where that came from. It's just going, it just was on my mind. Anyway, um, but it did it really nice. As you can, which is better, Kindle Fire or iPad 2. Didn't talk in a really professional voice. Just kind of talk naturally. And it was there. Then you can, best tablet, Kindle Fire, iPad 2. And it'll load it up in a really nice squidoo page. <laughs> uh, very nice. And it just works well. So that's about it for the iPad version. Once again, awesome features. And there are, you know, little Easter eggs where you can, not Easter eggs, but just handy features that I really don't think I'll use that much. But that's really up to personal preference where you can kind of manage your tabs by kind of sliding through them like that. I think it works better on the iPhone because as a smaller screen, you can easily do that more easily. Uh, but, you know, it's there on the iPad if you need it. And overall, guys, this is just an awesome browser for iPad. And now I'm going to move it over to iPhone and show you guys a little bit of that in a tiny bit more detail of right now. Okay, now I have my iPhone here, and I'm going to open up Google Chrome right down on my dock. I'm already on YouTube.com because it did sync with my iPad. But a couple of things you will notice. It doesn't have, if I pull it up closer, that Google Chrome as kind of tab manager. It looks a bit different, which I can't understand because that'd be really weird having tiny little cool page icons crammed into here, which it does have a really nice way. As you can see, I have four pages open. You can, you know, elegantly scroll through them that way. It's a little bit different. It does take a little more time, however, expected on a smaller screen such as the iPhone. So say I scroll one, you want to do this, oh nice, and then I want to scroll through it with a different way. I can, like I said, with the iPad you can kind of scroll through as you can see as a nice animation. So through that, scroll through that, scroll through that, and like I said, doesn't work 100% well because some of the page, uh, you know, just the page doesn't work with it as well because, you know, it may think you're going to scroll this way. But that's not Google Chrome's fault, that's simply the web page's fault. So, uh, same features, like I said, up here you can have a nice incognito tab, new tab, other devices, and if I was on a different page, you'd have more options. Uh, but, and that's basically nice. One thing I did forget to mention on the iPad version is it's kind of expected with Google Chrome, which I didn't really need to mention it. Uh, but if you just kind of, the URL and the actual Google search is really combined. So say I just want to type in Apple, you know what, I'm just going to use dictation. Apple. And I do Apple. I didn't actually, <coughs> excuse me, I have a lot of stuff in my throat today. Um, but as you can see, Apple. Apple. I didn't say to .com because it didn't actually launch to Apple's website. I just did a Google search for Apple, which is always nice. I really do like that they're combined together. Makes it a very nice, seamless, and it just looks good, uh, you know, for experience. But that's really about it. I mean, it works well. You can have different pages. I mean, basically the layout is a bit different. But, you know, if you use the iPad version, it takes a little bit of time to get used to the iPhone. But that ex that's expected with a smaller screen, like I said. Uh, one other feature, you can kind of swipe to close all tabs right here, which is always nice. And then you can add a new tab fresh from start. So that's about it for my review of Google Chrome for iOS. If you enjoyed the video, please like it and subscribe up above. That will let you know when I post a new video. That's been it, guys. I probably crap I'll catch you guys in the next one.